Your Excellencies, Ministers, Distinguished Guests, Ladies and Gentlemen. Good morning to all of you and we want to welcome all of you to the Kingdom Leaders Prayer Breakfast and to the fourth edition of our Kingdom Leaders Prayer Breakfast here at Hotel Vivor, organized under the Leaders Arise Nagaland and Fathers House Church Dimapur Nagaland. Today we have in our midst a um, minimum 90 to 100 delegates represented here this morning from nearly 40 organizations here from Nagaland. Can we all give a big round of applause? <laughs> Opening this breakfast meet gives me an opportunity briefly to comment on how the Kingdom Leaders Prayer Breakfast has evolved since its inception last year on the month of June 22nd, 2019. To gather Kingdom Naga leaders, organizations, and key individuals to pray for the peace and prosperity of Nagaland, to raise passion for kingdom leadership, unleash your potential for leadership, and also network with other kingdom leaders here in Nagaland. This Kingdom Leaders Prayer Breakfast takes place at a time of great strategic flux. We are proofed of the high level in fact we are so proud this morning our hearts are elated our hearts are excited this morning at a high level of attendance and i want to uh, particularly note the participation of the national socialist council of nagaling i am led by shri kraibo chawang and also the naga national political groups led by Shri Ajit Ajito Topi, advisor to collective leadership. Can we have the NSC and IM and the NNPGs stand on your feet? And can we all, ladies and gentlemen, give a big round of applause? <laughs> Hallelujah. You may be seated. In our generation, we must work together to maximize the chances that all gathered here will have the wisdom and the courage to make the right decisions and choices, opt for openness, peace and cooperation, and so receive and also expand the progress that we have made together by our coming together. We are small as a Kingdom Leaders Prayer Breakfast team, but we think very big. Then we look to God. Just before I look to God in prayer, I would like to give this uh, Bible verse from 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1 to 4. 1 Timothy chapter, chapter 2, verse 1 to 4. Most of all, I am writing to encourage you to pray with gratitude to God. Pray for all men with all forms of prayers and requests as you intercede with intense passion. And pray for every political leaders and representative so that we would be able to live tranquil, undisturbed lives as we worship the awe-inspiring God with pure hearts. It is pleasing to our Savior God to pray for them. He longs for everyone to embrace his life and return to the full knowledge of the truth. Shall we all stand on our feet as I lead all of us in the opening prayer? Can we all stand? Let's close our eyes. Let's bow down our heads. Father, we want to thank you for this wonderful gathering this morning of our leaders from Nagaland. God, we thank you for this day, for the fourth edition of the Kingdom Leaders Prayer Breakfast, organized this day by the leaders Arise Nagaland and the Father's House Church, Dimapu Nagaland. Father, we ask that in you, every leader that are represented here, they would be blessed and they would lead well. So citizens in Nagaland can live in peace and many will come to salvation. Father, we pray with intense passion that they would lead with hearts that seek the wellness of the citizens here in Nagaland. Amen. Father, we pray that they would embrace the life of Christ Jesus, our Lord, Yeshua HaMashiach. And Father, we pray that they would come to the full knowledge of the truth of God's word. Father, we pray that you would bless our Naga leaders. May our Naga leaders seek 
to find God's wisdom that they would long to be wise through your understanding God and as they follow your leading may the people be overwhelmed by the generous grace and the peace the shalom of God we dedicate this morning and the breakfast meet into your loving hand and care we believe God that your presence is here and that your Holy Spirit will touch every single heart of our Naga leaders present this morning for we ask in the blessed name of Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior Amen you may be seated we have many leaders who have expressed their uh, regret for not attending the fourth edition of the Kingdom Leaders Prayer Breakfast. We have received a letter of apology from the leader of the opposition, Sri T.R. Zeliang, former Chief Minister and the leader of opposition, Nagaland. We have also received an apology from the Speaker of the House of the Nagaland Assembly, Sri Shangyan. And without further ado, I would like to call on stage for the launching of the first edition of Kingdom Leaders Prayer Breakfast Coffee Table Book. There's a slight change, but we are family here. I would like to call on stage our Sir Sri Niba Kronu. On stage, I would like to call upon Reverend Yimsom also on stage. Minister of Planning and Coordination, Land Revenue, the Government of Nagaland. I would like to request our Sir, Honorable Sir, to kindly launch the first edition of the Kingdom Leaders Prayer Breakfast Coffee Table Book by opening the ribbon of the launching booklet that is placed there. Can we all give a big hand? Praise the Lord. I would also request our Sir, as he remains standing, to also launch the coffee table book that will be presented to us, sir, in a short while from now. Okay. If you can open a ribbon to the coffee table book, and later on, every one of you can take your copies that will be available on the table. Let's all give a big hand. Even as our sir remains standing, we want to do everything quickly today. <laughs> I would like to, uh, we would like to present this certificate of appreciation on behalf of the Kingdom Leaders Prayer Breakfast because our Sir Kronu is the one who has sponsored this morning's uh, Kingdom Leaders Prayer Breakfast 4th edition breakfast meet that we, are organi that we are organizing here. So I would request our ambassadors to kindly hand over the Certificate of Appreciation. I want everybody to give a big hand. Thank you, Sir. We shall now hear a special song from Lily. She's the worship leader of Father's House Church, 7th Milestone, Dimapu.
for the dedication of the first edition of Kingdom's Leaders Prayer Breakfast Coffee Table Book, I call upon on stage Dr. Rokovili Sajer, the Associate Pastor, Kelly Baptist Church, Kohima Village, for the dedicatory prayer. God, our Heavenly Father, we come before your throne of grace. We are thankful to you because you are our Father, our God, and our King. This morning, Father, we come before you as leaders, and it's our prayer that, Father, we will come together in oneness under the umbrella of your son Jesus Christ under the Lordship of Jesus and Lord as we come together we pray that father you will bless the dedication of this book that this will in future extend your kingdom and your glory with thanksgiving in Jesus name we pray amen this is a very wonderful opportunity for, our, for all of us to come together. But for the few of the uh, delegates this morning, it may be the very first Kingdom Leaders Prayer Breakfast that you are attending. This is in fact the fourth edition that we are having. We started Kingdom Leaders Prayer Breakfast at Dimapur on June 22nd, 2019 at the Father's House Church. The second edition we had in Kohima at the Oriental Dream Hotel. The third edition also we had in Dimapur at the Sky Garden at the Seven Milestone in Chamukidima on uh, December, uh, November 22nd. And it is such a wonderful privilege for all of us to have all the leaders from Nagaland. It really warms our heart. I would like to give a few uh, upcoming events of the Kingdom Leaders Prayer Breakfast because most of you are very much aware of the Kingdom Leaders Prayer Breakfast. It was initiated by the Leaders Arise Nagaland led by our missionary apostle Reverend L. Yumsong, all the way from Sydney, Australia, and the Father's House Church, Yimapur, Nagaland. Few of the upcoming events that we are planning to have this year, Kingdom Leaders Prayer Breakfast, we intend to going, uh, taking this breakfast meet to the national capital of India, New Delhi. And we are also hoping and praying that we would have a large congregation of leaders from around the capital in, in New Delhi. So we are praying for that in the summer of 2020. Also, we will be having the Kingdom Leaders Prayer Breakfast pre-Christmas celebration on the 28th of November, 2020. So this year, we will have just two Kingdom Leaders Prayer Breakfast here in Nagaland. We are also planning for a Kingdom Leaders mission trip to Australia, Pacific, particularly in Sydney this year. And we are hoping and praying that in the, in the next two months, we will take some leaders from the Kingdom Leaders Prayer Breakfast, some of the delegates to Australia to having a mission trip. We are also praying for a Kingdom Leaders Retreat, one day retreat. We know that your time is very, very precious. And so we would like to have a one day retreat with all our leaders with the vision of Kingdom Leaders Prayer Breakfast that is uh, under the caption, RUN releasing your kingdom potentials, unleashing the potentials that God has given to you in godly leadership, and also networking with kingdom leaders in and around Nagaland. This morning, as we've mentioned, we have our Sir Sri Niba Kwanu, who is the Minister of Planning and Coordination, who has sponsored the breakfast meet. And today, the first coffee table uh, book of the Kingdom Leaders Prayer Breakfast was just released by our sir and dedicated by our reverend. This coffee table book has been um, sponsored by Sri Dr. Andrew Ahoto of the Living Stone Foundation International from Dimapu. After the breakfast week gets over, we have few copies of the coffee table book and we would encourage all of you to have your cof uh, coffee table book. It's a free donation, whatever you feel led to give uh, to the coffee table book for uh, the expenses that has been incurred. 
and we believe that all of you will take your copies. We just have 50 copies and you can pre-order your coffee table book also. With regards to uh, this day, since every, everybody seems to be very stiff at the moment, so I just want to just ease the tension. We also have in our midst uh, General Shokin Chauhan, uh, the chairman of the ceasefire monitoring cell. He is very much part of the Naga family. Hallelujah. And we know that he is part of this kingdom, kingdom in this kingdom journey. And we are walking together along in this kingdom journey. I want to ease the tension because maybe some of us are meeting for the first time in this new year 2020 and maybe some of us meeting for the first time in this new decade of 2020 2030 so for the for a few moments i want uh, monks to put a very lively music i want all of the leaders to stand and i want all of us to have interaction because part of this kingdom leaders prayer breakfast is to meet each other love each other with genuine christian love hug each other and pray for each other also. So I want all of us to stand. I am so proud of you today. 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 So this I would like to give time to just meet and greet each other. So let's just take some few minutes. So just move around and welcome each other.
I think it's time for us at the moment to kindly go over on the tables on my right and on my left there the tables are already set for our kingdom leaders prayer breakfast the breakfast is already served there everything is there can we all help ourselves Thank you. 
and hosted over 270 meetings for leaders for various groups, political organizations and civil societies. He is now based in Sydney, Australia, with his wife, Irene Yimsung, a Chinese Singaporean, and is blessed with two children. And now for the keynote message of the day, I call upon, on stage, Apostle Reverend Lul Hu Yimsung to come and share what God has placed in his heart for the gathering. Shalom, and a very blessed Happy New Year to all of you who are here this morning. It's a historic gathering initiated by our very own Yahweh, our Father in Heaven. I've been away from Nagaland for the last 34 years, but God has given me this vision in 1905. My involvement with the people of Nagaland goes back to the 6th of December 1995 when Dr. S. Jamey was chief minister. This latest modern talk had been hosted once by Dr. Jamey, twice by Mr. Rio, and four times by our former chief minister, Tiao Zui. I've taken this to almost all the civil societies, church group, people's group, panchayat, you name it, government department, chief secretary team. And I've taken this seminar to all the Asian countries except North Korea, Cambodia, and Vietnam. Before I begin my speech, I want to take this honor and privilege to acknowledge the traditional honor of Kohima, the people of Kohima Village Council. My mom comes from Kohima Village, from Fitachi Michael, Rutas Clan. I acknowledge the presence here. God is doing something. It's a defining moment in the history of Baba people and a design moment as well. I asked myself many times, why do I have to go back to Nagaland? When I left Nagaland on the 6th of December and landed in Singapore, I thought I will never come back because my vision, my calling was to be a missionary for the rest of my life. It was in Singapore where I used to have all my prayer meetings. I'm a man of prayer to this very day. 85 to 90 percent of my beloved wife and our ministry is prayerless. It was in one such prayer. The Lord spoke to me clearly about leadership. I began to ask the Lord, what leadership? Blended the style. Then began the journey. People call me Nehemiah. I'm not worthy. But thank God for that. I'm just a simple person. I'm not a politician. 
not a natural worker, not a bureaucrat, just a servant of the Most High God. I believe God is doing something in other. We're here not because we want it to be. It's God's doing. Let me tell you, people of God, this is a historic gathering. The first gathering of the Kingdom of the First of the year 2020. And also, the first gathering of the new decade, 2020 to 30. I sense my spirit very strongly to gather with the people that are working around the world. I leave to go back to Sydney where I'm based with my family in the ministry on Monday. I'm invited to go to the Australian House of Parliament to attend Jerusalem Prayer Breakfast, which will be hosted not by clergyman, hear my voice, by a senator. I'm looking for a day when a time will come that the chiefness of Darwin will host the King Leaders Prayer Breakfast. Amen? Amen. Not me, not Reverend Robert, the chiefness of Darwin. I respect anyone who's authority. The time will come when God speaks. We're expecting the President of Israel to come and attend a breakfast meeting inside the Parliament House, the Federal Parliament House in Canberra. We expect more than 50 to 80 head of state and leaders from across the nations to come and attend. I work with kingdom leaders around the world. I'm a kingdom man. I don't have a fling. We need kingdom breakthrough believers today in Ireland, not kingdom breakdown believers. I want to share my heart with you, my dear leaders in Ireland. The topic I've chosen for today is one thing in 2020. What is the one thing in 2020 for you? My leaders, listen carefully. I can feel the Holy Spirit anointing as I stand before you. This is not a political gathering, I'm sorry. It's a purely spiritual gathering. Biblical, we started biblical, we're biblical, we continue to be biblical. That's way, no other way. One thing in 2020, to begin with, it says in Psalm 27 verse 4, One thing I have asked of God that I will seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord, not some days, all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to dwell in his temple. King David, my hero, that's what I named my son David. David was the man after God's own heart. He is the king of Israel, the most powerful king. His heart desire was to sing after God's heart. What is your desire this morning, leaders of Nagaland? What are you seeking? I, is your heart of the heart of God or something else? He wants to dwell in the house of the Lord, not just some days. My Bible says, all the days of my life. God is looking for 27 believers in Christ. Not a part-time Christian. Enough is enough. Shame on us. We call ourselves nothing for Christ. We make it to nothing for crooks. It can, we can turn it around. Because we have God on our side. Follow the Bible, you'll never go wrong. I stay within the boundary of my Bible. I have a mother who is 78 years old, living in my village. She prays for me every day, my son, stay within the boundary of the Bible and you will always win. I thank her for mom, who is a wonderful intercessor. Leaders of Nagaland, King David says, he wants to dwell in the house of the Lord and gaze some of the beauty of heaven. What are you looking at? The real beauty is the beauty of heaven. I work with the indigenous people of Australia for the last many, many years. I met an indigenous leader, an Aboriginal leader. I said, brother, I want you to go to heaven. And he's strong as Aboriginal accent. No, nah, I don't want to go to heaven. I don't want to go to heaven. I want to live here. Because Australia is beautiful. It's beautiful. He doesn't want to be to heaven. Many are deceived. Are you one of those people this morning? This is just a temporal home. Kohima is beautiful. So many places in Ireland so beautiful. Can't even compare with the beauty of heaven. I get up every morning and begin to gaze on the beauty of the Lord. Many of you who are here are receiving a morning devotion. I get up every morning, 3 o'clock in the morning, I pray and I send my devotions. 
and the rest, my King Jesus handles it. Let's get some of the beauty of the Lord. I went to youth a mission in 1906. They call it Youth Without the Money because I landed in Singapore with only 20 US dollars. It brings me to tears every time I share this testimony. My God who called me in the assembly 24 years ago is still faithful. I'm much more richer in many sense in every area than I was 34 years ago because I may put my trust in you. I survived and succeeded in my mission field in many countries because I enjoy the beauty of heaven. What about you? It's time to touch heaven and change earth. Touch heaven and change earth. Let's go to the next point. The second point I want to share with you, my beloved leaders of Nagaland. You're not just leader, you're my beloved. I love all of you. I don't have a feeling. I'm a very transparent man. So is Reverend Robert. The time has come for the people of God, especially the clergy, who are you with me this morning. It's time for us to be transparent, to love Jesus, and to love humanity. Touching heaven, changing earth. One thing. To change wanting to seek now the second point is wanting to change it talks about a rich young ruler that Jesus encountered 2,000 years ago in Israel Mark chapter 10 verse 20 and Jesus looking unto him loved him and said to him one thing you lack go sell all that you have give it not to the rich to the poor give it to the poor and you will have treasures in heaven. Let me tell you, people of God, you gotta change, we gotta change. Rich loving the rich. Come Christmas. When was the last time you gave your food, your clothing, did put it in your neighborhood? In my 34 years of ministry, my wife and I, my beautiful, lovely wife, she's a prophetess. I love my wife so much. She's waiting for me in Singapore already. We invite overseas students from Asia. We did that in Singapore. In Australia, we do the same because they can't go home. We invite them to a place. We share a simple meal. I'm a simple man. So beautiful. It's time to change. The young man said, yes, I've kept everything. How can I inherit eternal life, Rabbi or Yeshua? Jesus said, you like one thing. I don't tell lies. I've kept the Torah very well. I respect my parents, my teacher. I don't commit adultery. I'm just a good man. I don't drink, I don't smoke, I don't do drugs, I don't do sex, I don't gamble. You never. Know okay, you like one thing. Go and sell it. What about you? It's time to change. Time to change. It's time to change from religion to relationship. Amen? From religiosity to walking in relationship, Yeshua, the King of Glory, who we proudly can nagle for Christ. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. Let me tell you, people of God, when you and I walk after the heart of Yeshua, you will have prosperity. You will have fulfillment. I spent 17 years in Singapore as a missionary. Singapore was my open school. Singapore had six, have got five C's. Singaporean, firstly, you must have cash. Not enough. You got to have car. So expensive. One of the most expensive road tax in the world is Singapore. The one that is clean. After 10 years, you got to dispose of your car. To buy a new car, you got to tender. Not like here. Then it's not enough. They want condominium. Not government housing board. Singapore has the best housing board system in the whole world, I'm telling you. U.S., Germany, you name it, they are coming to Singapore to learn. The new capital under Pradesh, Amravati, is now been built by the Singapore Consortium. You name it. I know I'm speaking. Condominium, property. Then, next. Cash is a little bit not good enough. We want credit card. Credit cards. It's having Nagaland now. I don't have credit cards, by the way. I carry my cash here. That's it. Bulky. All right. You go to the hotel. Sir. You decided that the next day you become a servant. Ma'am. 
the next day become a May. Credit card, not enough. Singapore, the city where Donald Trump and Kim Jong Un met. Why not in Switzerland? Not in New York, Singapore. It has got some of the best system in the world. Security, whatever, they have it. A place where things happen. Playing golf is a status. You got to be a golf club member. When you come to Singapore, I got to take you to a golf club. Then you would like to spend some time with me. If I take you to a coffee shop, a, a neighborhood shop, my status is low. Golf club, they pay lots of money. They play golf to make friends, whatever. Still not enough. All right, that's not enough. You got to be a club membership. People pay thousand dollars to be a club member. They have found that satisfaction has not come from the four seas. The last ten years, Singaporeans have come up with a new city that I want to tell you today, my leaders. It's called charity. Charity. You find Singaporean leaders, MNC, multinational company CEOs, Attorney General, ministers. Singapore has the most billionaires in Asia, not Hong Kong, by the way. They go around the world, feed the poor and the needy in Andhra Pradesh, in Brazil. I said it because I've got friends who are doing this. They are not satisfied with what they have. What about in Nagaland? Are you satisfied? Are you sleeping peacefully in your house? Let me tell you, I went to a wonderful, filthy, rich family's house. I do leadership ministry. I go to all homes, rich and poor. She told me, Reverend, I feel so scared to go and lock and unlock my door. Are you living in peace? How was your sleep last night? How do you feel today? Are you feeling satisfaction in the land and properties you have possessed? What you possess will possess you. My Bible tells me. It's time to give up things for the kingdom of God. So into what God is speaking to you today. Why do I embark on this journey? Why have I? And why are we on this one? I believe in a shot of doubt. This is my God giving me the revelation. I thank God for the Father's House Church in Ireland. Not anyone. The Lord showed me clearly. I spent 99% of my time based in Father's House Church. I spotted. The Lord showed me a young pastor by the name Reverend Robert Kiko. Let me tell you, it's time to sow. What the Lord speak to you? Come on, lead us. Go and do it. Just do it. Just do it. Time to change. Time to change. The number two points I want to share with you, my beloved leaders of Nagaland. One thing to choose. It says in Luke chapter 10, verse 41 to 42. But the Lord answered and said to her, that's Martha. Martha, Martha, you are anxious or troubled about many things, not one thing. In verse 42, but one thing is needful for Mary, your sister, had chosen the good part which shall not be taken away from her. Are we a martyr today? Not my sisters, every one of us. We are so busy, busy. Nagaland has become a busy world. I have been texting our Nagaland leaders so many times. Someone bothered to answer. Some said, I'm in a meeting, I'm in a meeting. How many meetings are those many fruitful or fruitless? It's time you change your strategy. Amen? Time to change your strategy. Don't waste your time. If it's not for you, step down. Step out. Give chance to someone else. How long are you going to hold out your leadership and take it to your grave? Enough is enough. Time for change. Believe in the change that's coming. If you don't change, the change will change you. Believe in the power of the young people in Nagaland. Believe in the power of our women who love our society so much. They shed tears when we were laughing. It's time to change. Needful. Martha was so busy with her things. Some of you are so busy. I salute you this morning. You took time off to come to this kingdom leaders prayer breakfast. Heaven is rejoicing this morning. Your life will never be the same. We all have been given 24 hours. It's how you give priority to your time. Choose your friends wisely. 
Don't go with Tim, Tom, Dick and Harry. I'm a very careful person. I've got three, four months here. I'm not everywhere. I'm a focused person. I'm a spiritual eagle. Because the Bible tells us we go to heaven, I have an eagle. Physically, my eyes are not good. I carry an extra glasses with me. At age of nine, I started wearing glasses. They call me a little cute boy, in the knowing world suffering. But I've got a spiritual eyes that sees better than the physical eyes. I built triple, four or five times the size of normal glasses. Very expensive. Even my insurance policy can't afford. That's my physical eyes. But my spiritual eyes is so sharp. It's time. It's time to choose your things wisely. Now let's become a land of meetings, organizations. How many consultative meetings are we going to have? It's time we come to Yeshua. Sit around the table as he's invited us. Come to the Lord's table. We better learn to sit together because we are going to go to heaven to sit for the marriage supper of the Lamb. Are you serious about this? Don't take it lightly. I'm not a religious person. I'm a religion person. I believe there's heaven, so there's hell. Let's make our way towards heaven. Be godly. Be spiritual. Important. Don't allow your tribe, your denomination, the charge of the size of your church and congregation to stop you. Let me tell you, Father South Church is only four years old. We only have about 150 or 200. They're doing kingdom ministry. What about you? May the Lord help us to understand. It makes me godly people. I keep saying this all the time. Choose your friends wisely. There are some people here this morning, you're going to say goodbye to some friends this year. You're going to deter yourself like the wise men who were warned in the dream not to go back to Jerusalem because Herod, the wicked king, was about to kill them. The people in your friendship, they want to kill you. They want to destroy your ministry, your friendship, your marriage. Choose your friends wisely. I believe this from the Lord. The third thing I want to share, the fourth things I want to share with you today is one thing to know. We got to know one thing this year, my beloved ladies of Nagaland. It is taken from John chapter 9, verse 25. He therefore answered, Whether he is a sinner, I know not, or I do not know. One thing I know, that whereas I was blind, but now I see. Jesus healed a blind man 2,000 years ago in Jerusalem. The first people to attack him were not his families. The religious leaders, the Pharisees. Today we have Pharisees everywhere, including Nagaland. They are religious people, but they don't believe in personal relationship with the Lord. They don't believe in signs and wonders. They don't believe in the power of prayer. They don't believe in God that this biblical worship, biblical leadership will make way. Not easy. I got a lot of discouragement. Don't ask your names. Now it's a small world. Reverend, are they redeemable? The people asking whether you guys in here are redeemable still can be saved. I asked some of them back. My dear friends, when you preach the gospel or message on the pulpit, do people get saved all the time? Do people respond to your message positively all the time? And has a stop before preaching the gospel? And has a stop before stepping down from your pastorship, your ministry, whatsoever? Keep quiet. I'm a fighter. I survived such in the 40, 34 years in a foreign land. My God is real. He's so powerful. Nagalin, we should not be at the rock bottom. Shame on us. In everything we're lagging behind others. We are not the 30, uh, 24, 5 states of India. I remember very clearly as a young boy, 16 states of the Indian Union. Look at our status today. Where are we? Don't point your fingers on church group, political group, national workers, you and me. We've got to retrospect, introspect ourselves. 
Everybody has a role to play. The only way we can succeed is you mix with the right people. Let people say whatever, doesn't matter. Leave them behind. I don't know what you say, my friends, you tell them. But once I was like that, since I became in connection with these godly people, since I'm in connection with this ministry, my life has changed. I have no time to argue with people who doesn't believe in what you're doing. My Father, the Holy Spirit does the talking. Just stay focused. As a Nike, every time, just do it. Just do it. I just do it. I'm loving it, man. I'm loving it. It's so beautiful. Hallelujah. Great change is coming to our land. Last but not the least. One thing I do, I like it so much. It brings me a lot of memories. Philippians chapter 3, verse 13 and 14. Brethren, I counted myself yet to have laid hold, but one thing I do, forgetting the things which are behind and stretching toward or forward to the things which are before. I press on toward a goal, unto the price of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. I studied only one school. Baptist English School, which is now Baptist Higher Secondary School at Mission Compound. Some of you sitting here have known me since my childhood days. I only went to one school until I failed my metric twice. I have appeared on metric twice, fell twice. MFBF, that's my degree. It's a South Side, by the way. Let me tell you, I had no memories of going to church with my parents. But my dad, decided to send all his 11 children to Baptist in school. It was in a school, the son of school, I became a son of school boy. The scripture that I've learned and have impacted my life are the ones that I learned in my son of school. Let me tell you, Philippians 3, uh, 14, my school motto, every morning, we go to, I still have my necktie and my school badge with me, even after 40 years. We will stand up sometime outside Mission Compound in the chapel. It's my heart like you, you take your pledge as an army, a citizen of a country. I press toward the mark for the price of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. See, it's here. As a little boy growing up, it was nothing to me. But years later, I know. I'm pressing towards. Don't look that way. I'm sure many of you have been hurt and wounded by people. Don't lick your wound. Lake the word. This is a prophetic word the Lord gave me to give to the Aboriginal people of Australia. As I work with the elders in the nation, they will gather. Nagas, we don't cry. I want to see more tears here. They will cry and cry. And they will cry and talk about the stolen generation. How they were denied in Australian passport until 1970. In the 1970 census, all the census were taken, including the flora and the fauna except the Aboriginal people. How would you feel as the traditional people of Australia, the first people, and all this living human culture in the world, 40,000 years history? And so they tell the white people, the settlers, the white people have been there for the last 200 years or so, and they just tell them, we'll be here a little longer than you, 40,000 years. And so I respect the indigenous people. Not only Kohan village, everywhere I go, I respect the indigenous people. That's my Jesus way. When Jesus sent the apostles, these disciples, he said, go and give your greetings. Never go through the back door. What about you? Are you doing something through the back door of the indigenous people? You better repent. Ask the blessings. We started as kingdom leaders prayer breakfast at Chibugidima. I went to Chibugidima village, met the German. Angamis were very you know, we are good to one another. So, you know, somehow very sweet culture. But there's a weakness, let me tell you. It's okay, it's okay, Reverend. You do it, you do it. No, I'm not going to do it. His name is Rosavutio, by the way. Chairman of so many village council. You are the chairman. The first village that the white, the colonial rulers entered Naga Hills. It was in your village, the Sea the King, the first missionary sent from Impur, Mokokchu. Step overnight in your village and enter. God has given his vision and a transition highway starting in all the way from Turkey, ending in somewhere in Indonesia. It's coming your way. 
You can't be sleeping anymore. I need your blessings. I want you to endorse this meeting. The chairman of the village council came and gave us a welcome. We're here not on own. Any problem, go back to the village and ask them. The second breakfast here at Kohima at the D Oriental Grand. I approached Dr. Nipikiri, the chairman of Kohima Village Council. So willingly, so happily came and welcomed us. Let me tell you, leaders of Nagaland, wherever you are, love the indigenous people, honor them, and the blessing is yours. That's my secret and my secret of walking with my Jesus in all its 34 years. Coming to an end. The Lord gave me a vision, a prophetic vision for Father's House Church and also for people of Nagaland. That this year is going to be a year of the three E's. It's for you. In Jesus' name, receive it. The three E's is for you. The first E. It's going to be a year of explosion. You are going to receive explosion in your personal life and your people's life collectively. There's going to be such an explosion that you have never seen before. Things that have been dark, lying dormant for years are going to come out. I've started saying in my own personal life and ministry so fast. In two weeks time, I begin to see the explosion. And this itself is an explosion. The second ease that I want to give you in the name of the Lord is, it's going to be a year of expansion. You're going to go sideward. Not physically your waistline, okay? But sideward, God is going to extend, expand you. It will only use if only you believe. Wait and see. I'm going to wait for testimonies coming. You know, as I, as I do leaders with. I spend two and a half hours every morning. I get up at three o'clock and pray. And send to more than 205,000, 100 people in our lane. But it's confidential person. I'm getting wonderful kingdom testimonies breakthrough in the marriage life, personal life. Expansion. Last but not the least. It's going to be a year of extension. You are going to, do, you are going to go to places you've never been. In the spirit in the supernatural, in the physical, you're going to see lots of expansion. Hallelujah. Let me close by saying this one. God gave me this revelation three years ago. There's a better way to serve and lead your people. It's God's way. When I received that, I knew to fell on my chair. I said, hey, Daddy, what is this? It's a revelation. There's a better way uh, to serve, a better way to serve and lead your people. It's God's way. How have you been leading your people, my leaders? The second thing is, there is, we can, together with God, we can serve and lead better. Maybe you're doing something good. Allow God to come in. Allow Yeshua to come in your friendship, in your family, in your circle, and you will do better. Ten years ago, the Lord gave me this revelation. I received lots of revelation. I moved my revelation from the Lord. My wife was a prophetess. We consoled one another. I was staying morning walk in Australia, in Queensland, in 2010. Good leaders in high demand. Godly leaders in low supply. I was shocked again. What is this, Lord? In Nagaland, especially the season, after Christmas, it just, you guys are so busy. Sports meet, council meet, people's meet, you name it. I see the papers. I call it, oh, Reverend, I'm in a village. Where? Keep it in. Tonkuru, or somewhere. You're so busy. Do three meetings. And when you guys stand up, and we stand up, today, we need good leaders in Nagaland. Good leaders. But I hardly hear people crying out for godly leaders. It's time for godly leaders. My appeal to my brothers from I, the National uh, Naga National People's Group, we've got people from NSCM IM, NSCM Reformation, and NNC, and NNPG, and maybe others. And together with all the governmental leaders, business leaders, bureaucratic leaders, tribal leaders, it's time to pray for godly leaders. I tell people all the time, I mean all kinds of leaders, you have seen the photographs, whether he or she is still in power, leaders are leaders. I'm praying for 300 
job to lead us in Dogalim. Like Gideon's prayer warrior. Gideon chose 30,000. The Lord said, not this number, too many. 20, no. 10, no. 300. If we can raise up 300 people who are godly and decisive, and want to see change coming to Nagaland, not politically, economically, but spiritually first, then we can transform this little state of Nagaland. We are not big. We can do better than others. We shouldn't be lagging behind. Let me tell you, that's so I in time of message all the time, hear my heart, Nagaland. I believe this is the heart of God. So in closing, thank you for coming. God bless Nagaland. And please stay back for a group photograph, which will be featured in the next coffee table book. God bless you so much. I love you. Keep in prayer. I'll leave on uh, Monday. Anytime I'm available, I'll come back. God love you. I love you so much. Thank you, Apostle Reverend L. Jim Song, for sharing the powerful message which God has placed in your heart for us this morning. On this fourth edition of Kingdom's Leaders Prayer Breakfast Meet, we have a very special presentation of a word, a certificate of honor to His Excellency, Dr. S. Jamir, former Chief Minister Nagland, Governor of Goa, Maharashtra, Gujarat, and Odisha. The certificate reads, for your service, sacrifice, continuing success, generous role as an impactful Naga leader, public recognition of distinction and merit for outstanding service. We applaud your efforts and wish you continual success throughout the coming years. To receive the certificate of honor on his behalf, I request and call upon his son, Honorable Sri Apok Jamir, former Parliamentary Secretary Naglin, Member of Parliament Rajya Sabha, to come and receive the certificate. And to present the certificate, I also request Apostle Rivan L. Himsong to hand over the award. Sri Apok Jamir to address the gathering with a short speech. First and foremost, I would like to express on behalf of my father a sincere regret of not having been able to participate in this uh, wonderful uh, breakfast meet. I have a short speech which is written by him to, to Apostle Reverend Im Song and I would like to read this out. But before that, I would like to take the advantage of this wonderful enlightened gathering to also express some of my point of views also. First and foremost, I would like to thank the organizers of this Kingdom Leaders Prayers Breakfast, especially the Reverend Robert Kikon, who is the Senior Pastor of Father's House Church, Apostle Reverend I. Yim Song, Founder, Leader, Abnaglin, IAN, Mr. Johan and his lady wife, the galaxy of Naga leaders, the national workers, the leaderships from all the organizations and from every walk of life. Those who are present here, I believe, have the potential of bringing transformation to this great state and to the people of Nagaland. This whole 
exercise of having this leader's prayer breakfast from time to time is not just an exercise of people gathering together but also of sharing ideas which can be, can be put into action so that we see progression within our own society, within our own people, and also to leave us mark today so that the posterity can always claim and say that our forefathers, our leaders of yesteryears, have made the right decision. And today, I believe the gathering of the enlightened galaxy of leaders of Nagalin are here to do business, to make this land a better place for everybody. Ironically, today, we see different sorts of challenges which are confronting the nation, the world, not politically, but in the form of deadly disease. I think everybody is very aware of the coronavirus which is creating and having a lot, uh, created so much of attention all over the world. A virus which is very, very fatal. But I believe with the intellect and with the power of God, everything will be overcome. I would like to read the extract of what my father has written. Everybody knows that he means well. He is hard hitting as, at times. But like every one of us, we feel what is, we do what is best for our people and the leadership here. Every one of you have your own opinion of how to take our people forward. And by the grace of God, we have the intellect of coming to an understanding in tolerance and for the benefit of our Nagas to come out with a concrete and decisive solution which will benefit all. So here I am reading his message. It says, the dear Apostle Reverend Imsong, as an old man, I'm avoiding travel by road for some time, so I'm unable to attend your meeting. However, through this short note, I want to share my views and opinion on some important issues plaguing our society. As an old man, my expression will be frank and honest so that the issues may be considered with, without any prejudice by the members. This meet, meeting is significant in the sense that it is designated as a gathering of kingdom leaders. It is therefore expected of all of you to consider any matter seriously and dispassionately for the larger interest of the people of Dhaklin. In my personal opinion, the following undermentioned points are the malice of Naga society. Number one, when late Atal Bihari Vajpayee, the then Prime Minister of India, visited Nagaland in late part of 2003 in a press conference at Kohima, diplomatically stated that he recognizes the uniqueness of Naga history. This English word or phrase was taken literally as if this is a special preserve for the Nagas. It should be understood that every tribe or community had its own unique history. Fortunately or unfortunately, many of the top leadership of the underground used the phrase as the basis of Naga political rights, 
without studying in depth the relevancy of this world or phrase in the context of Naga political struggle. Just for the sake of argument, let us say, even if Naga history being unique, it can be treated as past history, which at the most can be emulated by the present generation. The question before us is, can we claim any uniqueness in the present prevailing situation of Nagaland? Should we be satisfied only with the uniqueness of the past, or we should also make the Naga society unique in some way or the other so that posterity can talk about the uniqueness of our achievements? Number two, what is the real picture of Naga society today? Obviously, it is quite the opposite of uniqueness. For more than a decade, the Naga people are confronted with plundering, exploitation, looting, extortion, threats, intimidations, and thereby completely destroying the glorious edifice of Naga society built on the honesty and strong character through gun culture. Nagas were known as honest, upright, and courageous. Nagas are no more as they were. After completely destroying the Naga character of honesty and courage, we are talking about their political future without their mandate and without their knowledge and consent. In a democracy, the people are supreme and without their knowledge and consent, their political future cannot be decided by any one. The sanctity and legitimacy of democratic rights of the citizen cannot be suppressed or stolen by any internal or external forces. This is the crux of the matter before the Nagas. Number three, change in Naga society. Change is a law of nature. Those who are gathered are ac acutely alive that the world is in a const constant flux. Nothing is constant and also nothing is permanent. Everything in this world is changing and the only permanent thing is change. Are the Nagas not part of this change in the world? Change management is important for the state of Nagaland to survive in this very competitive world. It calls for Darwin's theory of species, survival of the fittest. Should the Nagas move with the time and pace, our people must discard emotional attachment to the past vain glory and look for the futuristic development of the growth. They must see things from the present perspective and future orientation. They must look beyond for the possible events. We need a big change to make a breakthrough in the system's terrible clogged, terribly clogged. Small change will not help because most of the time, small is not beautiful and desirable. We need to avoid conventional, clever thinking. A genuine, natural thinking can only bring forth a big change in Naga society. This inevitably, inevitability of change, if delayed, can never lead Nagaland in a particular road to success. What we need today is action, not percepts, because actions are said to be better than percepts. Because actions translate percepts into practice and experience, and Nagaland desperately needs unconditional support and love of the people, especially kingdom leaders towards descent. All indications from different reliable sources clearly show that the people of Nagaland are embarking on a new horizon. William Faulkner, American Wright, said, you cannot swim for new horizons until you have courage to lose sight of the shore. The shore continues to cast its spell over the swimmer for a long time until it is no longer visible. Similarly, 
ideas, thoughts, and conventions continue to exercise enormous influence on man over a period of time. Ultimately, one has to free oneself from the old world of conventional ideas and systems in order to discover a new world of fresh ideas and establish new systems relevant to the present and future generations. The people of Nagaland have been too much obsessed with politics as if this is the only one that could sustain a society. We have to liberate the minds of the Nagas from this dreadful obsession and let them discover a wider and brighter new world of ideas and thoughts. Last but not the least, that it is the legitimate demand of the people of Nagaland that the national workers should, before the content, uh, make it very transparent to the people of the Nagaland of what the contents are, so that collectively we can make a better future for the people of Nagaland. These are some hard but bitter realities which we have to solve. Otherwise, Naga society will not see the light of day. With kind regards, yours sincerely, Dr. S.C. Jamil. Thank you, sir. We take this opportunity to acknowledge and give recognition for those who have contributed towards Kingdom's Leaders' Prayer Breakfast. I request at this time Reverend Robert Kikon to announce the presentation of certificates. Thank you so much, sir, for this wonderful speech. I believe in diversity, we have our strength. There is much we can learn from one another. Our progress can be with exchanges of ideas and of continuous learning and adaption. Thank you, sir. I stand on behalf of the organizers to present uh, and read out the Kingdom Leaders Prayer Breakfast Certificate of Appreciation and for which I would invite Reverend Apostle Nimsong to kindly come on the stage to present a uh, few certificates of appreciation. We would like to present the Kingdom Leaders Prayer Breakfast Certificate of Appreciation and uh, the certificate states this that this certificate is proudly presented to Nagaland Gaonbura Federation for your leadership, hard work, commitment that your team exhibit daily are a true testament to the outstanding service that our citizens receive. It is this sacrifice, professionalism, pride and serving as the guardian that makes a profound impact on our community. We applaud your efforts and wish you continued success throughout the coming years. Issued this 8th of February 2020 at the 4th edition of Kingdom Leaders Prayer Breakfast 2020 at Hotel Vivor Kohima. May I call on stage the team of the Nagaland Gaonbura Federation, the chief and his general secretary and the team to kindly come over on the stage and receive this certificate of appreciation from the Kingdom Leaders Prayer Breakfast. And even as they come on stage, can we all give a wonderful big applause. Let's give a big hand. After which, I think the chief would like to speak a few words on behalf of the Gambura Association. Nagaland Gaonbura Federation, ladies and gentlemen, who have been walking this journey with us ever since the inception of the Kingdom Leaders Prayer Breakfast. Thank you, Nagaland Gaonbura Federation. I would request one of the Gaonbura chief to kindly come over and give his speech. Short speech.
right from the start of this kingdom leadership, they are nuggling GB, Village Federation. What we have observed that on behalf of the Nagaland GP Federation, I would like to highlight. It is a platform where life changes. A platform to grow, serve, empower, inspire, and encourage each others. First of all, all glory and honor to our Almighty God for giving us such a wonderful gathering of the Naga leaders. leaders gathered together of oneness. At this very outset, it is of immense joy and honor to receive this appreciation of such game or award. And acknowledge duly endure on our social endeavor to bring about peace and unity among our Naga community. It is an encouragement to strive for better Nagaland. I want to refer to the words of God, saying, if one member suffer, we all suffer together. If one member is honored, we all rejoice together. So, this appreciation of certificate is not of competition, nor winning or losing, but of encouragement. Nagas as a whole. This is not NGBF receiving, but Naga as one voice rejoice and honor this appreciation of such gift. Thank you very much, the Father's House Church honoring us and encourage us. Lastly, uh, yeah, we in Nagas, so many civil societies, so many organizations, and we have every platform we have an advisor, what we have across that most of the civil society stakeholders we don't have. We declare ourselves that our land is nuggling for Christ. But we don't have keep such spiritual advisor in every stakeholders. 
Therefore, Nagaland Village Chief GB Federation has decided to lead our platform in a spiritual uh, advice. So uh, we are very much uh, happy and we have decided that uh, our river Apostle River Elim Nagalin GB village chief has said that him to be our spiritual advisor. Thank you very much. Be that place awesome. Thank you so much, Chief Shekutu Zalipu, the General Secretary of the Nagaland Gambura Association. We also have two uh, certificates of appreciation to be awarded. So, Reverend, you can please come over. Exercise is needed. We have, at the moment, Kingdom Leaders Prayer Breakfast Certificate of Appreciation. And this certificate is proudly presented to Dr. Andrew Ahoto Sema, Chairman of Livingstone Foundation International Dimapur, for sponsoring the first edition of Coffee Table Book of Kingdom Leaders Prayer Breakfast 2020. May I call on stage Dr. Andrew Ahoto Sema. Can we all give a big hand? Thank you. Thank you, sir. Now we have another last certificate of appreciation. We always have this tradition to uh, award this certificate of appreciation to the place which hosts our Kingdom Leaders Prayer Breakfast Meet. And this certificate is awarded to Hotel Vivor Kohima for sponsoring the conference hall sound and logistics and also for your hospitality for the fourth edition of Kingdom Leaders Prayer Breakfast issued this 8th of February 2020 at the 4th edition of KLPB 2020 at Hotel Vivor Kohima. May I call on stage uh, the hospitality in charge? Kindly come over and receive this certificate of appreciation. Let's give a big hand. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. So at this moment, I would like to call upon Reverend Apostle Yumsung to lead us in prayer. There are a lot of people that travels to Nagaland. There are many people that visit Nagaland on vacations. We have a lot of tourists here, even there, here in this hotel. Uh, there are a lot of people that fight for Nagaland, but there are very few who lead Nagaland. And all these Naga leaders seated this morning, you are the ones that lead Nagaland. And we believe the best. We're going to have a special prayer led by Apostle Reverend Yumsung. Before we go to the prayer, which is the most important part of this gathering, it's called prayer, Kingdom is prayer breakfast. So nothing will be complained we don't before we don't pray. Um, just an addition to that, uh, we'll be awarding Kingdom Leaders I know award every year, starting from today. At the end of the year, which will be held on 28 November, we'll be awarding more awards based on people in the entertainment industry, music, and our business, church, finance, education, and different fields. Pray that God will give us the wisdom to come with the right choice. It's time for encouragement. This is purely scriptural, and we pray, we ask the Lord, and we do that. And when you become a part of us, we believe in our family. So thank you for coming today, my dear Lisa Madeline. We want to pray for all the leaders. I'd like to call upon the team from Angami Christian Revival Church Council, led by the Acting Secretary, Dr. Monsanto Naleo, and also Goimaton Baptist Goimaton Pastors Fellowship, led by uh, one of the leaders, and Reverend uh, Nick Atanika, the pastor and associate from Visema Baptist Church. And also, I'm sure there's, uh, I was told that we've got uh, pastors from the two uh, national people. 
Bible school as well. Please come up. If there are any pastors who are here, great doctor, the rest of all, please come up. I'm going to pray kingdom prayer and blessings on the ladies before we close. And right after this, stay for five minutes for a photograph, which will feature in the next coffee temple. Thank you. Shall we all stand together? We in Nagas, we like must pray. We want you to be part of this. As you, as you pray for you, you pray for us also. As servants of the Most High God, church leaders, we will not be religious workers, but spiritual religious workers for the kingdom of God. My dear reverends and pastors, shall we extend our hands to us, our dear leaders, and pray for them. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus, Lord. We worship you. We exalt you today. King of kings and Lord of lords, come and Lord, receive your glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Glory to God. Our most Christian Heavenly Father, King of Kings and all the Lords, the Creator of the universe, including another people, we give you the glory, honor, and praise. It is you who have initiated, it is you who have orchestrated, and only to you we give you the glory. I want to thank you, Daddy, for the great work you have done today, Lord, at the fourth edition of the Kingdom Leaders Prayer Breakfast. As a journey from here to the fifth, to New Delhi, the nation's capital, and to other parts of Nagaland and even overseas, we pray, God, you will raise up Kingdom Breakthrough leaders from Nagaland to go to the nations with a message of breakthrough. Hallelujah. We are second to none because your word says, Emmanuel. You are with us. I pray for every single leader who is here today. I pray for the families, for the organization, the government belong to, the institution, whatever, Lord, we pray. And for those who are not here with us for different reasons, be with them. We also lift up our assembly which is going on take place about a kilometer from here. We pray, Lord, you'll be the Lord of the Nile Assembly. Let wisdom prevail, discernment, unity, and also oneness, both of courage and of course humility. We want to thank you for this beautiful time. We are going back to face a new year with excitement. We are super excited because you have blessed us today. And we look forward not to this year, 2020, but even to 2020 and to 2030 and beyond. Lord, receive your glory. As we begin to hear the testimonies of the breakthrough that's going to take place. I decree and declare today in Jesus' name. I come against any spirit that is against the Spirit of God in Yeshua's name. I silence it. I neutralize it. I bounce it in the mighty name of Jesus. The knowledge for Christ is a reality. We will walk after the heart of God. We will leave. We will, we will walk the talk, not talk the talk. Enough is enough, Lord. Hear our cry. Forgive us the way we have grieved your heart with one another. And today, Lord, you have bonded us together as a kingdom family. And it's a movement. This family will grow and grow and grow and glow for the glory of God. As we leave this place, by the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweetest communion of the Holy Spirit, that will each and every one of us till we meet again until Jesus comes in glory. And let all God people say together, Amen. Let's give the Lord a big clap. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus.
God, your word says in Isaiah 60, Arise and shine. Arise and shine, for your light has come. See, darkness covers the earth, and thick darkness is on the people. But then the Lord will rise, and his glory will be seen here in Nagaland, and amongst all the Naga leaders gathered here, God. Father, we are so deeply touched, Lord, this morning, God. Our Praise hearts, Lord, Lord, are burning with the passion Shara. that you have given, Lord, for the kingdom's Ooh, expansion, God. God, we pray oh. for the peace of Nagaland. God, we pray for the prosperity of Amen. Nagaland, Lord. Amen. We pray, Lord, for the blessings of God upon all our Naga leaders. Yes. Our Lord. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. God bless our Nagaland, Amen. Lord. Amen. This is your land yes. before it becomes our land, yes. God. You have given us for a short duration yes. to lead our people and lead the, the citizens of our land to God. Yes. Father, to that very end, Lord, we ask for a fuller revelation of your word. The wisdom that comes from heaven, Lord. May we seek your advice. May we seek your face, King Jesus, Almighty God. And may you be the center of our lives, Lord. Join us together, our hearts together, Lord. Join us together, Almighty God. May we love each other, Lord. May 2020 be a year of breakthrough, Lord. May the God of Be'erazim, the God of breakthrough, bring breakthrough to our Naga story, Almighty God. You are the center of our lives. You are the center of our people. You are the center of our Naga, our Naga people and our Naga land, Lord. So, Lord, we bless, we dedicate all our Naga leaders, Almighty God, into your loving hand and care. We pray 2020. We will see the beginning Amen. of a time Amen. where we will come together, pray together, eat together for the glory, glory and for the kingdom of God. Lord, we thank you for such a time as this. You have brought us together. Even as all our other leaders leave to their respective homes and places. God, we pray for traveling mercies. Amen. We pray from the crown of their head to the tip of their toes. Every nerve, tissue, veins, blood vessel, every organ in their bodies. We pray for salvation of God deliverance of God, and the breakthrough of God. For in the blessed name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Isa Alma, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we ask and we pray. Amen. One more. Uh, Thank you. Uh, well, uh, just one more, one more, one more. One more, one more.